Hello and welcome everybody to the Missing Data Workshop, Effectively Dealing with Missing Data Without Biasing Your Results. This is Karen Grace Martin of the Analysis Factor and we are going to spend a few weeks together. And in this video, this is just an introduction, I want to go through everything we're going to cover in each of the modules. So we will cover a lot of information across the five modules, but I've broken it up so that you won't get overwhelmed. Hopefully each module you'll, le you'll learn really a core piece of information so that you'll really get understanding before we move on to the next thing. If you haven't yet, please feel free to explore our workshop website at missingdataworkshop.com. Everything you need is there. If you have any technical issues or you can't find something you need, just use the customer support form on that website. We will have a question and answer session each week. I suggest you make a list of questions as you watch the videos and bring those to the next Q&A session. Or if you have a content question in between, you can always post questions at the bottom of any module page in the leave a comment section. So module one has five parts. In it, we're going to start with an overview of the issues involved and the approaches to dealing with missing data. The very first part is what is missing data? It sounds obvious, but it's actually not as obvious as it seems. So we will talk a little bit about what missing data is and when it often occurs. We will also talk about some related data issues in which data may not be entirely missing, but only partial information is available. And then in part two, we'll talk about missing data mechanisms, which are really at the core of knowing how to deal with them. The mechanism indicates the relationship between the missingness and the actual data values, what kind of process led to the data to become missing, and it tells us a lot about how much information we have about the missing data. In part three, I'll do a very brief overview of the four main approaches to missing data, and particularly what an approach needs to do to be good and be effective. And then in parts four and five, we'll go into detail on two of those approaches. They're two of the simpler traditional approaches, complete case analysis and single imputation. Single imputation will be a nice background for module two when we're going to go into detail on multiple imputation. In module two, we will explore in depth multiple imputation. Most of this module will be about how to do it. The steps involved, how to build an imputation model and choose an imputation model. Because this gets pretty involved, in this module we're only going to consider imputation on continuous normally distributed variables, the nice pretty ones. Then once you understand the concepts and how to do the steps, we can go into more complicated situations in Module 3. So in Module 3, we'll finish up multiple imputation with some special cases. And once you're actually implementing multiple imputation, you discover a million little details and issues you have to consider and keep in mind. And it's these special cases, these issues that don't match the textbook where you, the data analyst, often get stuck because you're not exactly sure what to do. So in this module, we'll explore multiple imputation in four common situations where we have to move beyond the textbook perfect continuous normal data. And these include cluster data, scale items when either 
one or a few items on a scale are missing or if a whole scale is missing. Categorical data, that's a big one. In the case when y, the dependent variable is missing. In Module 4, we'll spend most of the time talking about and demonstrating maximum likelihood approaches. Maximum likelihood doesn't get as much attention as multiple imputation because multiple imputation works in so many situations. Maximum likelihood only works for a few analyses, but when it works, it's lovely. It's really nice. It has really great properties. So we'll talk about what it is, what it means, and the various situations when you can use it. And I'll demonstrate some of the different ways to do that. Then we'll talk very briefly about non-ignorable missing data, which is really another special case where certain values are more likely to be missing. We're not going to delve into that deeply because most of the techniques for that require data that usually isn't available. But I want to give you an overview of your options in those situations. And then finally in session five, we'll talk about missing data diagnosis, which is really the fun part. Missing data diagnosis is actually the first thing you would do if you were actually implementing a missing data approach. I'm talking about it last because I want you to understand all the issues involved in the different approaches so you know what you're looking for and why it's important as you're doing the diagnosis. So we'll go into details of the patterns to look for, the analyses to get those patterns, how to figure out which mechanism you're working under, and what you need to consider in choosing each approach. And then at the very end, we'll just go through some brief conclusions and wrap things up. So until next time, This is Karen Grace Martin with The Analysis Factor.